This week's topic in EC111 is Electronics 2. In Electronics 1, we cover digital electronics, how to build AND gates, OR gates, turn the motor full on, full off. In Electronics 2, we cover analog electronics. Here the challenge is how to drive something at uh, any voltage, such as how to output a sine wave. The type of circuits we look at in Electronics 2 are power amplifiers, like how to drive an atom speaker at 100 watts, filters, how to build a subwoofer that passes frequencies below 250 Hz and reject frequencies above 400 Hz, a mixer, you can combine analog signals, so if you want, ever wanted to know what Katy Perry sounds like when mixed with Anagata De Vita, you can do it, and sensors, measuring sound, light, temperature, pressure, flow, things like that. In this lecture, we're going to cover some things we look at in electronics, namely finding components in DigiKey, a very nice website out of Thief River Falls, how to determine the parameters for a sensor based from these, from these data sheets, come up with a mathematical model to relate voltage versus temperature for a thermistor, and then come up with a calibration function using MATLAB so that given the voltage out of a circuit, I can tell you what the temperature is. Now to start with, DigiKey is one of our favorite websites in electrical engineering. It's kind of like our toy chest. It has a very friendly website where you can search. If you search for sensors, you can, you'll find over 19,000 different sensors in stock. If you want to do something like look for a temperature sensor, such as a thermistor, um, again, you have over 5,000 thermistors to choose from. DigiKey's got a nice website. You can sit there and uh, select what resistance do you want for your thermistor, uh, what are the tolerances, um, whether you want it through hole, surface mount. Again, a very, very friendly website. What those parameters tell you um, is, is such. The resistance at 25C is pretty much what it says. Low values of resistance are nice for measuring wind speed. That builds a hot wire anemometer. High values are nice because you have less sulfating. Uh, we're going to choose a 1K resistor, just because 1K is a nice number. The tolerance is how much variation you have between different resistors. Here, smaller is better. The B value tolerance. The B value is a parameter that tells you the resistance versus temperature. Again, the smaller is better. The B050, B2550 is the temperature resistance relationship. That's the number we're really looking for. The operating temperature is kind of self-explanatory, how much the range the temperature sensor works at. And the mounting type tells you how what the package is. Through hole is good for us. Surface mounts nice for industry. What we're going to do is narrow the search by saying I want 1,000 ohms at 25 Celsius through hole, in stock, and you still have a bunch of choices. Here's somewhat arbitrarily, we're just going to pick this bottom one right here. When you select it, it tells you the price in quantities of 1, 10, 100, the DigiKey part number, um, and also scroll down a little bit, you'll have the data sheets. In the data sheets, what we're looking for are a couple things. The B25 over 1000, that's the parameter. It tells you the resistance versus temperature relationship. Um, some of the other parameter, parameters tell you, like the dissipation factor, this will dissipate 3.5 milliwatts per degree Kelvin. If you apply current through the thermistor, it produces heat as I squared R. That heating will warm up the thermistor. At equilibrium, It'll be one degree Kelvin warmer than the environment uh, for every 3.5 milliwatts you're dissipating. The one we're looking for is this guy, the 3930. What that tells you is that the temperature resistance relationship is this. This is the 3930. It's 1,000 ohms at 25 Celsius, which is 298 Kelvin. And thermistors have an exponential relationship between temperature and resistance. So with this, I can now mathematically model the thermistor. In MATLAB, if I plot the temperature between 0 and 50 Celsius, in Kelvin, I can convert Celsius to Kelvin as temperature plus 273, and then from the previous equation, I can calculate the resistance at each temperature. And that gives me this type of characteristic. Notice that it's highly nonlinear. 
and also it changes quite a bit. That's the nice thing about thermistors. There's a large change in resistance versus temperature, meaning if I can measure resistance, I can measure temperature. Now most, most, most processors, they don't measure resistance, they measure voltage. So what I can do is build a voltage divider. Take the 1K resistor in your thermistor going to ground, fed from a 5 volt source. That voltage divider will output a voltage based upon the resistance following this equation. That's the equation for voltage divider. If I use MATLAB to calculate what is the output voltage from the voltage divider, it'll go from about 1.3 volts to 3.8 volts. Follow this blue line. What that means is now, if I measure voltage, I can tell you what the temperature is. Calibration is trying to come up with a mathematical expression relating temperature to voltage. Now what you can do is go backwards. If I know voltage, I know resistance. I know resistance, I know temperature. Calibration is typically saying, I've got a function. Come up with a function to approximate this curve. It's not that complicated. I could probably use a linear curve fit, or if I want to be more accurate, a cubic curve fit, so that when I take what I know, my voltage, I can tell you what I want to know, the temperature. That's all calibration is. Come up with a function that maps your voltage to what you want to know, the temperature. If I use the least squares curve fit, which is described in the lecture notes, what I'll wind up with is the following curve fit. Temperature is roughly minus 19 times voltage, plus 73. And if I take the difference between the actual temperature and my curve fit, this is accurate, worst case, within 1.9 degrees Celsius. If you plot the two together, the curve fit is a straight line, because I forced it to be a straight line. The actual voltage versus temperature is nonlinear. Again, I've got the exponential from the thermistor relationship. I've got the voltage divider relationship. All those are nonlinear. So it's not too surprising that the actual voltage versus current, or voltage versus temperature, is not linear. Uh, with a linear curve fit, I can do pretty well. That's where MATLAB comes into play. With MATLAB, I can determine a linear curve fit to minimize the sum squared error. I don't have to use a linear curve fit. I could use a cubic curve fit. If I chose a cubic function, say temperature is a function of v cubed, v squared, v in 1, I can come up with a better curve fit. Um, here to do that, I choose my basis function. And my basis is just a function of voltage cubed, squared, voltage in 1. Now using these squares, find the coefficients a, b, c, d. Again, using MATLAB. The result is, here's my curve fit. And if I take the difference between the actual temperature and my estimated temperature based upon the curve fit, cubic is within 0.1 degrees Celsius. And what that looks like is basically dead on. So what we have is, in Electronics 2, part of what we cover is how to come up with a calibration function. Read the data sheets to find the actual uh, temperature versus re resistance relationship for the thermistor. Use MATLAB to find out what the voltage versus temperature relationship is. And then using least squares curve fitting, come up with the calibration function so that given the voltage, I can tell you what the temperature is. And that way, if I measure something like 2 volts, my function will tell me Here's the temperature. That's actually how temperature sensors work. And with that, you should be able to do the homework.